and everyone hi so happy national science day it's tomorrow so but we have we are connecting today on sunday uh, so i take this opportunity uh, to welcome uh, today's chief guest um, dr bindu krishnan so madam is our uh, guest lecture for the raman uh, lecture series okay uh, madam is an expert in the field of uh, photonics uh, non linear optics uh, nano systems and fiber optics so these has got lots of application uh, in the e industries as well so dr bindu uh, pursued msc mtech phd from uh, cochin university of science and technology so madam has uh, pursued post doc uh, in us on obama raman fellowship so madam has worked on several institutes uh, like cmet cmet trisu and uh, uh, isros uh, one of the isros uh, uh, sister institute uh, that is iist indian uh, institute of space technology so it is in uh, trivandrum so madam has worked there so now madam is working at uh, trisur skvc uh, college as an assistant professor in physics so madam has published several journal papers uh, in the international uh, conferences madam has presented papers so it's a really great opportunity if people who are uh, there are from uh, engineering and basic science background definitely you guys can uh, get uh, uh, lots of information on uh, uh, maybe maybe we can connect basic science and applied physics in engineering uh, how madam can express let us see but the topic of the day is different we all know but uh, madam can share here and there our experience Uh, where she has worked in IIST and uh, uh, other institutes, so it's a great uh, privilege for me to introduce Madam uh, or to Imam. And uh, please start the session. Uh, you can uh, start the session before that. One, let me tell you, everyone knows uh, Sir C. V. Raman. So uh, on his uh, uh, remarkable discovery, which he has made on the uh, 1928 28 February. so we are celebrating this uh, that was the first time in the history of uh, uh, physics i can say science uh, we have started uh, recognizing someone uh, from india to the uh, world wide so in 1928 he has discovered that and 1930 he got the nobel prize for that raman effect raman scattering we all know that so that is the day uh, we have taken uh, privilege and we are celebrating every year Uh, as a national science day so over to you ma'am please thank you uh first of all this is not an entirely technical talk that i am intending to do but as the title suggests uh of course i will be it will be scientific and technical in certain aspects and in certain aspects it won't be uh it will be intermingled with my with my personal experiences and in general uh how science can be more than just a career career option how we can really uh, live as consider it as a passion for whole of your life i have been enchanted by science particularly physics right from my school days and uh, now i am almost nearing retirement but still i am as passionate about physics as ever so how to keep up that enthusiasm it was sort of easy in my days but it is not so easy in the current scenario because i am a teacher because i am a mother i am seeing that uh, unfortunately our uh, especially indian way of teaching science and engineering or even plus 1 plus 2 level how prepare students to a career even at that stage uh the curriculum and the too much heavy load try their best to kill the enthusiasm of science so in a way my talk is how to keep up the enthusiasm in science despite our 
curriculum, despite our way of teaching, despite our way of testing, despite this heavy load and pressure of hindrance and everything, despite viewing it just as a mean, means to get an end, that is a earning job. Science shouldn't be any of this. It can become all of these if you're gender, genuinely passionate about science, all these will follow. But the primary thing is how to integrate science into your life, into your personality as a passion and try how to keep up that passion. So my talk will be a bit like that, I hope. I don't know whether you expect that or not. I don't know, but I will try. Okay, let me share my uh, PPT. Uh, is it visible? Yes, my yes. it is visible. Yeah, is it visible as full screen itself, right? Yeah. Okay, so the topic is living an enriched life through science. Truly, my life has been enriched because of physics. And first of all, let me say, I went through the traditional path. I wrote the entrance examination. I got admission to engineering college. I started. Then I felt it is rather boring. I left. And then I embraced physics. And I never regretted. That is the best decision I ever take. Okay, uh, see, I'm not discouraging engineering people. I'm just saying that physics fascinates me. Science fascinates me. And from basic science, of course, technology, photonics. Uh, my PhD in M-Tech, uh, when, uh, when I reached that level, I moved out of, or, over to technology. But still, the basic is the passion you feel for a subject. And the important thing is to you, you follow your passion and not the passion of your parents. Okay. So that is the basic thing. Once you have your own passion for science, then everything else will follow. Hmm? So now, this is, uh, you're seeing the next slide, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, so basically what makes science different and more fascinating from other subjects on a school level for a kid? This I'm uh, talking from my experience, but this must be true for a lot of kids who get interested in science. Because science is doing, in Malayalam, in Kerala, uh, I studied in Malayala medium school and the uh, title of our book was Shastram Pravartana Manu. That attracted me a lot. Here is a subject which is all about small experiments which you can do and then you can test it and then if you don't get the result that they suggested in the textbook, you can go and ask the teacher. You can question the concepts, the teacher, everything. It gives that, that uh, liberation of not accepting everything as it is. Okay, that is like that. No. So that is one of the things that fascinated me. And of course, you can see it around all over you the applications of science how it makes life easier faster efficient so that also is a, a factor which attracts students hmm? so that is what is science is all about and science is not gathering a lot of information or mugging up equations to score marks to qualify entrance examination to get quote, respectable jobs. No, science is not that. Unfortunately, science is becoming that, but science is not that. Of course, we need equations because mathematics is the language of 
any science, physics, or engineering, wherever it is. Mathematics helps us to concise a lot of things and put it in just a few equations. That is the beauty of mathematics. Mathematics we use as a language. Engineers and scientists use mathematics as a language. But when you introduce a science concept to a student, you should never begin with an equation. Equation comes later. First, arousing the curiosity of the student is not with equations. But these are all easy to say. I know it's not the teacher's fault because too much curriculum, we don't have time to do any of these things. It is not activity-based education anymore and that is a tragedy. Science should be an activity-based teaching topic then it will enchant students. And why do we teach science not only for science students who may take science uh, streams or engineering or whatever, medicine or whatever. We teach it in a primary level itself, from the primary level. Why? It is to develop scientific temper, which is very, very important, as only one of our politicians really uh graphs graph the importance of that that was Nehru in the discovery of India he has taught what is needed is the scientific approach this is in the constitution of India the adventurous and yet critical temper of science the search for truth and new knowledge refusal to accept anything without testing and trial that goes against every superstitions. But unfortunately, in our country, superstitions are increasing at an alarming rate. A lot of nonsense facts are accepted as scientific facts. So that is all against scientific temper. So scientific temper is a way of approaching an issue or an event or a process in a logical open manner and to accept sometimes that you are wrong and that person is right. And sometimes it is the courage to say that you are wrong because there is no proof for what you're seeing. That's all included in the spirit of science. Again, science is not just a topic. Science is not just a career. It is. It should be a way of life or uh, approach towards life. And as uh, he suggested, today this talk is happening because of National Science Day. And India National Science Day is celebrated because it is the anniversary of the discovery of Raman effect. So how did Raman, C. V. Raman came to this great discovery? By asking a right question. Why the sky is blue? Such a simple question. But often the greatest truth of science comes from asking a simple question. Here it was, why the sky is blue? Then he studied experiments and he found that scattering is the result. And he found Nobel Prize for that, C. V. Raman. Okay, so the fundamental one of the fundamental aspects about science is asking the questions and asking the right questions. So it was like that in those days. But in those days, most probably the questions, asking these questions and the answering involved uh, basically explaining basic phenomenon of nature. Because in those days, we, are, we were in that process. But now, a lot of things are already uh, explained. But still science is about all about asking the right questions, how? So the next example that I give from nanotechnology, um, one of my research field is nanotechnology. So a question that is often appearing in that, why water does not wet lotus leaves? A lot of kids must have asked their parents, why, why water wets all other leaves? Why doesn't it wet lotus leaves? Why is it rolling and away? 
for a long time scientists didn't know then came the tools actually nanotechnology is said to be a, a field which concerns about everything which comes under nanometer to maximum 1 micrometer region or actually 100 nanometer region 1 nanometer is 10 raised to minus 9 meter so nanotechnology is actually a, not a new field it was there all the time but the, what happened uh, uh, was people found out the microscopes with which we can take image of such small things which is electron microscope we cannot uh, take an image of anything using light if the uh, dimensions of those things that we want to image are less than the wavelength of the light or waves that we use to image or to probe huh? it escapes the minor minor details the uh, probe will escape so a light cannot be used to image very small things then came de Broglie with the startling fact that electrons are not only particles electrons are also waves wave particle duality so by using the wave nature of electrons science technologists built a electron microscope see mechanics are by physicists but technologists use that theory to build an actual instrument which is electron microscope transmission electron microscope or scanning tunneling microscope wherever it is electron microscopes where instead of light it is using electron waves electron waves wavelength we can control by controlling the voltage applied so by scientists took the image of the surface of the lotus leaves using such advanced microscopes and they saw the leaf has such small small indentations on that see these indentations are what changing the contact angle and making the water not able to wet the surface but roll it away so that is explained but these days science is not about explaining but then how to use any knowledge to find applications to make our life easier better like that so now people are mimicking this and making uh, clothes like this or wall paints like this so that we can make self-cleaning surfaces because if we use a paint which has ability to make use of this type of indentations, then the wall will never get wet. Water will just roll down. And if your sofa is made of a material, a special type of material clothing, there you go. It will never get stained by anything. The water will roll down. Okay. So this is from the basic question how an advanced technology application comes but everything starts from the question why water does not wet lotus please these are the questions kids used to ask once but now do they see see lotus leaf do they leave their flats or houses do they ask questions? When they ask questions, do we answer them or do we shut them up? Okay, maybe this is where you are, I don't know full the details of your working of your labs, but maybe when we are taken away from nature, maybe simulations can help kids understand things. Maybe, I don't know. Because kids can do some simulation. They may feel it as a game. But through the game, they learn. Then if that happens, it can still, they can get enthusiastic about science. We can make them become enthusiastic about science. Curiosity of the kids shouldn't be killed by overload of information, unnecessary information. 
that's what is happening now okay but science progress is only by questions by curiosity okay now this is in the research field how we go from asking the right question but again i have issues with our teaching i'm not criticizing teachers i am a teacher and i am not able to do these things always because of the rush to finish portions but if i had time i would do that so uh, even te while teaching a subject to a student instead of asking a question in a dry manner if we can connect that to an everyday experience the kid faces and ask a question through that the kids may feel interested to find an answer on their own now uh, let me give an example for that an often question in optics what is diffraction what is a diffraction gradient okay boring question diffraction too many equations huh but you ask the kids how a cd works the cd that you play how a cd works then they will find that a cd is something like this in which there is not actually triangular but rectangular indentations are there on the a cd on a polycarbonate material small small pits are there and when a laser scans these pits inside the cd player that is how it reads so the cd is act and then they coat these pits with a reflecting aluminum film so that becomes actually a reflective grating a cd is a reflective grating that you have at your home did you know that you have a reflective grating in your home you thought gratings are there in the lab which makes our life terrible huh but you can produce the diffraction pattern from a cd using a laser pointer okay so this this picture this first photo is my at my home the experiment i created there is a cd in a stand here there is a laser pointer just a laser pointer if you point the laser pointer on a cd and then see the reflection pattern on the wall you will see something like this because of the diffraction you will see the diffraction pattern and if you make do this in the lab or in a home and you can measure the distance between these spots and apply diffraction formula you will be able to get the groove width of the cd which will be about a few micrometer so i gave this project this as a project for my bsc students it is a simple experiment but now they know how their cd works they know this a lot of how it is plays music as well as they learned something about diffraction so what i'm saying is uh, connect the boring topics which are considered to be boring by the kids to something they have day to day around them then they it will become interesting may my own question mm. uh, like uh, it's very difficult for kids to uh, convey these things because uh, earlier days everything was not settled i mean there was not simplification has been done uh which has been done right now like everything is accessible like technology is uh, evolved and we have uh, books written uh, we have syllabus oriented uh, studies so people uh, like kids already uh, they have ready made product available for them so they don't have uh, questions like why sky is blue those questions they are they feel irrelevant uh, to them so how to con uh, how to motivate them to begin such questions because the, the question as you said the question is the beginning of the any curiosity uh, or maybe uh, uh, the intuition way uh, where the kid will think that there is a question why what what is that they don't uh, uh, start with this question because they have already got everything like so what what is the best way to motivate them to start asking question see the questions can change Yes, yes. 
blue, why a lot of things are already explained. But still people think that everything is explained, which is not true. Huh? But uh, you try asking the kids how certain things which they're uh, which is there all around them in their house, how they work. Most of them won't be knowing it. Yes, but yes, yes. if you ask that questions and if they find to and try the answer for that, on the path of that, they may be learning the necessary theory and equations that, that are being taught. Then they will feel that these are all are not unnecessary things. I have heard a lot of kids ask, why are you teaching all these things? It's not needed for us. So if we have to convince them that they are enjoying the benefits of all these things, how to connect it with not as not sky or not lotus leaf anymore, but CD thing, they were interested. Trust mm -hmm. me, they were interested. They were surprised about the CD thing because CD is something they are interested in. So the, we should cause, uh, we should get them interested in things which because they are uh, they are uh, oh, for example fiber optics. Well, what happens in fiber optics? Uh, if you just ask them to start about total internal reflection, they will be bored. So ask them what is making this internet so fast? What is in them? Fiber. It is fiber. And how is information carried out in this? By light, not by electrons, by light. And how light is being uh, passed through a fiber uh, transatlantic cables? How? They won't be knowing. Then let them find what is taught at internal reflection. Mm. So you have to connect it to the things that they are using now. And then, okay. then we have to convince them that the things that we teach are not completely irrelevant. They are enjoying the benefits of it, but then saying that these are not needed. Okay, yeah, exactly. Right? Yes, ma'am. That's, that's what I think. Okay, again, um, explain the principle of magnetic resonance. Boring question. Huh? Ask them, in anybody in your house, mother, father, grandfather, grandmother, did, I take, did they take an MRI scan recently? They must have. All are sick these days. So, how does an MRI scan work? Find out. While they find out how an MRI scan works, they will not only find that it is the hydrogen in the water in our body that acts as tiny magnets when a high, high magnetic field is applied inside this machine. And that magnet is actually a superconducting magnet. So when the grandparent or whoever was pushed inside this thing, they were subjected to such high magnetic fields from a superconducting magnet. And it was the resonance of the spin of the hydrogen of the water in their different body parts that gave this image. Once they learn all these things, they will never forget how what is magnetic resonance. So, okay, let me stop here how we can, we should connect science teaching today, day-to-day -day, uh, gadgets or experience to make the kids enthusiastic. But then now I'm going a bit philosophical or a bit, okay, what motivates a person to pursue science as a career? Hmm? Not engineer, not doctor. That motivation is money all the time. No, I'm not talking about that. Science, pure science. So it can be a lot of motivations, but let me say the example of one famous scientist, Enrico Fermi. He, he had a bad experience that his uh, brother who was close to him died in a minor operation. Soon his sister also died. They were, there were only three kids. 
and she got he got into terrible depression and their parents tried to get him out of the depression by giving him many types of books so that he will find interested in some of the topics and he found interested in a mathematical physics book huh? and he studied uh, this physics pursuing physics interestingly he started only at the age of 14 and still by 17 he was so advanced and after four years at university he was awarded a doctorate in physics enrico fermi so he said that what motivated him to this was from the world physics science teaches me from the world of his her me and they into a world of this that how and why actually this is part of the motivation that i decided to pursue science because from the emotional turmoils teaching science it's all about this and that and how and why from being subjective like in the case of a literature we go over to go over to a world of objective facts and there is some peace in that there is some certainties in that where the, all around you is chaos still in science in physics there are certain things that are not changed. There are certain things that still works the way it is supposed to work. There is a peace in that. I don't know whether everybody feels that, but that is one of the reason, even unconsciously, some people pursue science. Hmm? But is science a just a career? No, actually, no, it's not a wise career decision in India to pursue science because the opportunities are very less. So here you end up only teaching physics after some time. So science is not just a career, at least for me, it's a way of life. And also, it's a kind of philosophy and it's a strange way of spirituality. When I say this, people are very, very confused because are scientists religious? I'm not talking about religion. Spirituality is not religion. If you're really, really spiritual, you won't believe in religion. If you're really scientific in your attitude, you will never believe in religion because you know that the blood sample of every human being, whether he belongs to a the blood looks the same under the microscope. It's only the blood groups are there. So if you really learned your biology, you cannot never say that, uh, actually believe that there is religion. Huh? So Albert, Ein Albert Einstein was, uh, many scientists were atheists outright, but Albert Einstein was spiritual in a way. So people were confused whether he is an atheist or believer so his caught on his famous caught on god religion and theology hmm? he believed in something some greater power einstein so this these are his words a knowledge of the existence of something we cannot penetrate of the manifestation manifestations of the profoundest reason and at the most radiant beauty he also said in some other way, the symmetry of nature. It is this knowledge and this emotion that constitute the truly religious attitude in this sense. And in this sense alone, I am a deeply religious man. So in my opinion, if you are studying science and imbibing the spirit of science inside you, not just as a subject then you will automatically raise about a lot of pettiness and education should help that do that right if you raise the kids above a lot of pettiness that 
their the elder generations have gone through they will believe they will become better citizens and i think they are already okay so science is spiritual if you learn it in not learn learning the information the equations won't make you read spiritual or religious in this sense spiritual no the true uh, true spirit of science that is it but it is not often easy i i became like this also because of my phd guide who was sambuji sir in kochi university i have seen him walking around uh, life and labs like a saint a sage because he has imbibed physics that has somehow enlightened him so at least that is possible that i learned from him more than my phd so now a bit more because in the introduction in given in the instagram they also wrote that i am a poet yes i am a poet in malayalam i have three anthologies of poems so many people ask how how is this do to things go together physics and poetry but they are not mutually exclusive opposing ideas we can find the beauty of life more intensely through science and then write poetry hmm? so you see a uh, vib vibrior color pattern on a bubble of soap bubble you find the beauty in that okay but we know the theory of that what is happening there and then interference we can calculate actually the thickness of the soap bubble by applying the interference laws but being able to calculate the thickness of the soap bubble and being understanding that it is interference that makes this uh, colors does it take away the beauty of that some people do but i think it's no i am it makes me marvel all the more at the beauty of the nature see how these things are so complex how beautiful they are so uh, poetry and science are not opposing to each other maybe poets write poems which are a bit different from the poems written by non scientists there is uh, there was a famous scientist poet holo he wrote beautiful poetry about one was about how he see through the microscope he was an immunologist what he see through the microscope and from there he goes to the expanse of the universe to a poem so that is the and another thing is i think lot of people i don't lot of people out there may be introverts and science is the best career for an introvert reclusive life in a lab huh it's a great career if you don't want to interact with too many people in day to day basis science is the fate for you okay now let me say the example of the spectroscopy experiment in the lab physics lab we begin with adjusting the initial adjustment of the telescope by focusing the telescope through the window focusing it at uh, far away leaves and then we focus it to make the leaves adjust sharp once we focus the telescope we turn it inside huh? and then close the windows now we are from going to concentrate through looking to the telescope to the slit and then we are going to study about all the dispersion or diffraction or whatever so this is symbolic this turning of the telescope of a spectroscope from outside to inside and closing the window and then in the lab if you are a scientist you don't get claustrophobic you don't miss the outside world 
in, instead. You find beauty that you are going deeper and deeper into knowledge, the world of knowledge in the darkness using these wonderful instruments and creating your own rainbows. So when we used to be study for BSc physics in UC college, every day we used to have labs in the afternoon and all the other students uh, who will be chilling about, they used to feel pity for us. Every day they spend every day in lab. If you are not interested in science, you will feel that too. But if you are interested in science, you won't feel that. Because you are finding out so many things inside the lab which they have no clue. You can measure the thickness of your hair, a hair by the diffraction experiment. Lot of things, some of them will be boring. Okay. Some may not like electricity uh, or some heat experiment. Some of them, nobody can like everything about a, a, a specific topic, but there will be enough to make you interest. are the further uh, things planned for this i don't know if you have time this is a poem by me which is a scientific in a way i don't know whether you have to tell me whether i have to share this poem or not then i otherwise i will yeah sure ma'am you can go ahead yeah Definitely, we will be happy to. Uh, this is a poem which I wrote in Malayalam and then my daughter my daughter translated and this came in Indian literature, uh, the magazine by Skendra Sahitya Academy. Against stellar role, loss. Uh, you must have some background about astronomy and the scientist Hubble. Uh, according to the scientist Hubble, the ex our universe is ever expanding everything is moving away from everything else and from the frequency of uh, the rate at which the uh, everything is moving away the radiation they emit will change and from that frequency we can find the rate at which that is moving hmm? from the frequency that they emit uh, that that was discovered by hubbles hmm? So here, that knowledge should be there. I used to wonder, sitting inside a moving train, is it this train that is moving or is it the other one? These days, I look at my dear ones and wonder, are they moving away or is it me? Hubble comes to me in dreams and asks, have you forgotten everything you learned in astronomy? that everything is moving away from everything else, the ever expanding universe. Inspired, I try to measure the frequency of the waves of love, but the conclusion puzzles me. Things are not as simple like in the world of stars. It's when I try to get closer that they move away. Hubble smiles. When you get closer to someone, are you not moving away from someone else? No, no. Hubble says, repeat your experiment several times on several people. Diffident, I try to measure the wavelength of your love. The needle vibrates violently and goes dead. How can we get closer or farther? You and I, a single entity. So this is my poem, Against the Stellar Laws. Inspired by science, but still saying that the stellar laws are not exactly applicable in human relations. So maybe this is the way when a poem comes, when a scientist writes a poem, they are not mutually exclusive. They are just different kind of poem. Maybe not appreciated by people who don't know who is Hubble or people who don't know what he said. Well, that is the, a lot of people don't get my poems. Okay, still, okay. And this is one of the quotes 
that has always inspired me in every possible uh, junctures of my life that I get frightened. Mary Curie, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Mary Curie's quotes. And now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. Actually, that is even more important in the time of this pandemic. We are all frightened. Yes, we are yes. all frightened. But the way out is only knowledge, understanding. Uh, and the theme of the Science Day of this year in India, we celebrate Science Day and each year there will be a theme. Here, the theme of 22 is integrating science, technology and industry for sustainable future. Hmm? Because sometimes science goes one way, technology goes on one way and most probably industry and these two never meet. But only when these all these meet together that something will happen to solve the problems, the type of problems that we are facing now. So this example here, it's in Ireland after COVID. Huh? This is a drone. This picture, what you see, this is a drone hmm? in which they have inserted a intense UV radiation light. And the drone goes around the hospital. Huh? And uh, shining this UV intense UVC light on all the beds that thereby disinfecting much efficiently than this uh, alcoholic disinfectant that we use. In the hospitals, they use these drones. So here it is combined, robotics, everything is combined. So this is in Ireland, post-COVID Ireland, what they have developed. And these are there in some of the hi-fi hospitals. So in, it, uh, just an example for how integrating different parts of things. Okay. And again, but science is not always good. Science is what science does. Unfortunately, not what scientists do with science, but what with politicians do it. Enrico Fermi was the person who discovered uh, nuclear, controlled nuclear reactions, which can be used for the power plant. Also, he was the architect of the first atomic bomb. So science can be a double-edged sword. But unfortunately, who decides how to make use of sciences? Not scientists, but politicians. Yesterday, we, saw, we heard a declaration by a politician that the scientific, that lab weighing so much ton, we will decide on which land it fall on. Okay. That is what non-scientist people do with science. And sustainable future, what is sustainable future? This With this, I'm concluding. Sustainable future is a mere humane science because we have clearly messed up the whole universe. You know that, global warming and all. So now we should concentrate more on not building weapons, but cleaning up the mess we make by green technologies like purification of the already contaminated water, desalination of the seawater to make drink water, more medical cure for cancers and new diseases, etc. And keeping this in mind, now my PhD student works one on one area is photocatalysis uh, of using new nanomaterials to purify water of disinfect, uh, um, which are polluted. And another thing that we concentrated is how to make fluorescent carbon dots from biology. dots and then they can be used for bioimaging or treatment of cancer cells. So these are the areas now my PhD students are concentrating. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, hi, everyone.
any uh, i think this is a great uh, lecture by ma'am actually comparing uh, the reality actually because uh, madam has uh, uh, said what we are going through the kids uh, what we are doing uh, i'm i'm really happy ma'am thank you so much uh, hi uh, prajwal and we have small kids as well uh, who has joined this session uh, especially for you guys please ask any questions yeah uh thank you so much uh, thank you so much ma'am for your words uh yeah. hello uh, hello all now the Hi. forum is open for question and uh, answers you can go ahead actually i don't think many kids will be there they will be learning they will be learning their equations yes 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 uh, prajwal yes ma'am personally i feel ma'am uh, like as you uh, uh, wrote a poem also in, in malayalam so i feel like uh, understanding science through uh, the language which we speak like mother tongue what we call mother language Uh, so it's also important i feel like i even uh, learned uh, my, my basic education through kannada medium like which is my state language uh, and i start i studied in uh, government school and i uh, started uh, appreciating uh, the language uh, even uh, i felt it, uh, it's very important for us to understand the uh, subject through what we uh, uh, like it is very easy for us to uh, understand the concepts sometimes but anyway uh, the english is a global language which we which we need to communicate science through that and papers are published in uh, english but uh, at least to communicate science we can use our mother language um, Actually, in native language yeah i what i feel is i learned in malayalam medium college uh, yes. school uh, actually i feel that up to um, uh up to 7th people should learn science or every subject in their mother language mother, mother tongue mother, mother and mother. from there from there we have to uh, slowly introduce to english and then by the time they reach plus 1 plus 2 they will be comfortable with english then they from then they should learn it through english itself that is what actually needed but now what is that's not happening now what happens is if you are in malayalam medium till 10th you learn in malayalam medium then you go plus 1 plus 2 sudden jump into english then you are lost yes yes so but yes. actually ideas become clearer in your head uh, if you learn it first in your mother tongue very true ma'am i agree on that but uh, no that's not going to happen because people these days some people are even ashamed to say that they learned in malayalam medium mm. but the uh, the system which has tried in that yeah the system has become like that so the parents also feel like uh, they are uh, privileged to send english medium schools and they are happy about it so they feel that they are proud to uh, send them to the uh, like schools which uh, teach through english uh that system we have uh, need to um like people to understand that uh, our kids aim should be learning concept understanding better up to as you said up to 7th standard of course it's really okay i think another 3 years they can cope up learning all the basic english and they can join yeah. for the plus one plus two and uh, take engineering a medical or any professional that that will not be a very difficult for them only yeah, english is the like communication purpose yeah. i think mathematics they can uh, appreciate in any language so that will not be a problem uh, unless they have some uh, issue with uh, the core language itself like in mother mother tongue itself it's very difficult for them the mathematics then i think it will be difficult if they are good at mathematics in uh, in the main 
the language is there, right? Then mathematics will not be difficult. Science for some concepts initially they may require uh, English uh, knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it, as you said, it is really uh, important for us to at least give awareness that start learning uh, science from basic language. Yeah. yeah. Anyone uh, having any questions, please do ask. Uh, we have got an opportunity uh, to uh, interact with Madam. Um, as oh, as yeah. I want to just give an introduction, ma'am, uh, to our, our lab actually. So I, I'm from engineering background. So we have a team from engineering background. But uh, physics, why we use uh, this uh, as a basic uh, requirement for our projects is uh, there is a multi physics uh, in our simulations. Uh, so when we do engineering product, no new product development, when we do, it's a completely mechanics engineering related thing where material science, engineering mechanics and the strength of the material, those are engineering applications which we use. But end of the day, to validate any member, to validate any project, we are using simulations. So simulation when we go simulations and uh, when we try to validate things, we uh, we found out that we require basic basic uh, uh, physics. So like yeah. Uh, to, uh, yeah. So then what I thought. Uh, so you want to if you want to declare if you want to tell that your product is successful in in, in uh, all the aspects, then the physics of the product should be very perfectly um, balanced. Like even in the uh, uh, because I worked as a project trainee in the ISRO. Uh, uh, as a project trainee. So at that time I observed they do and calculations, frequency analysis is a very must for any uh, product. Uh, if they are releasing a small beam structure for any space application, they do lots of calculations initially and validate by using simulations and uh, conclude that this product is, uh, this product our member is fine. Let we can use for uh, the application. So everything they are doing, uh, uh, actually, th that is a great practice to do and calculation and do. So, uh, like we have now a uh, scenario where people develop a product by uh, experience. You know, right? There are people who have learned uh, uh, engineering, uh, but they will, uh, they, like, diploma is there, ITA is there. That is an engineer, uh, like, like, way below to engineering, but people start with that ITI, diploma, engineering. So, those people. Uh, they have experience, they would produce them, uh, like there are, uh, they have CNC machines, they have laser cutting machines. So industry is like the experience, what they've got. But uh, to develop a new product, to design a new product, to invent something, to make innovation, or to, uh, to give something to this uh, uh, world. So definitely we need a basic knowledge of uh, physics, where we can uh, uh, clearly set our uh, um, set our objectives in deciding the uh, uh, deciding the product and give a proper solution to the problem. So there are lots of problems in this uh, world. So that's the reason our company is named as Infinite Innovative Physics Labs uh, Private Limited. So the Infinite Innovation is just a thing that we have a team where we sit together and ask so many questions like what, what is the problem? So for example, if you go into the agriculture, so we will ask farmers, we'll go directly to them and sit with them and ask them, like, what is the problem you are facing? They said that there is a starter, which is in, uh, which is used for 15 HP pump. Uh, we face issues sometimes due to uh, low uh, load conditions, uh, the starter and motor is getting uh, uh, destruction due to overheat, something is happening. So they're telling one-on-one -on -one, uh, one -on -one problems, we are noting down and we are thinking, uh, we are taking the, that's, those are the problems for our uh, investigation. So we are taking this problem from a layman perspective. What is facing an issue? Maybe the uh, mistake is from the farmer's side. The farmer is not supplying correct voltage with a correct uh, uh, voltage meter or maybe starter. Maybe he is not uh, maintaining properly that machine. Everything is there. So what we are doing, taking a problem. First, we will go with the layman investigation. Then we will apply engineering. Finally, we will validate through physics so that in all the aspects, the, pro the, pro the problem is got a solution. So in this way, we are planning. So physics uh, uh, is very important for us. So we have taken yeah. this uh, uh, and we are really happy. Uh, Prajwal, please do ask uh, your own question you said. Uh, I think there's a question from audience. Uh, yeah, Raman please. Has raised 
Yeah, Vimal. Vimal, you can continue. Hello, Vimal. Hello. Ah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello, ma'am. Uh, uh, my question is uh, uh, that in uh, the uh, they can do what they can do in the whole world and see in a daily life. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, your voice is breaking. Vimal, sorry to interrupt. Your audio voice is breaking. Audio is not clear. Yeah, Vimal, you know. Hello. There is some interference. Uh, now. Oh yeah. Now okay. Hello. Okay. Uh, my question is: uh, okay, uh, How can we ensure that uh, physics uh, uh, will come uh, in practically uh, daily in, in in our life? Because uh, we know that in universities uh, we just cram a theory properly, uh, but there is no practical uh, way to understand the physics. So uh, most of uh, things are that uh, we we can't uh, make roots uh, on uh, on that uh, on that uh, buildings will uh, blocks uh, 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 buildings will uh, ensure that okay, they... hello hello uh, yes, you are... yes you are you're an engineering student I was uh, but uh, not now I'm a UPSC aspirant uh, currently. Uh, uh, Hello. Uh, uh, yeah. Again, the question is how how uh, how can we ensure that physics comes in daily life in practical manner, not in uh, the theoretically. Theory uh, theory is uh, important, but practical is more important than that. Practicals are not uh, done properly in any universities. Ah, uh, that actually that is a problem. Yes, that is a problem. Uh, because uh, oh, see now. Again, is especially after COVID, there are no practicals going on uh, uh, well in a well manner. But the problem is uh, curriculum. Uh, I don't know whether it is in uh, true in engineering, but in general, the curriculum has become too big that. Uh, too much info is there in the syllabus. So we don't have time to go through each subject, combining the theory and the practical in the way it should be. Actually, instead of teaching a lot of subject uh, and then the kids ending up knowing nothing basic about anything, we should reduce uh, the syllabus specific to some people and in those subjects, we should take more time to integrate uh, the theory and the practical. That is the only solution we can do. But right at now, what is happening is earlier, teachers used to uh, demonstrate a lot of things about the theory in the class and all. They used to start teach in a leisurely manner to complete a year in a one year. Now it is semester. And in semester six months, we don't get six months, we get three months, too much portions to cover. So who, which teacher, which college, which university has time to integrate theory and practical? And that is the tragedy. So the problem is actually to be addressed from the syllabus formation to reduce it so that there will be space for more application, practicals and theory to go hand in hand. That is a problem of our education system. For example, we teach all about connecting uh, uh, resistances in parallel and series only in circuit diagrams. But in America, I went for postdoc uh, to America and uh, I, I had taken my kid there who was in fourth standard and she went to the hall, uh, school there. There they taught the same thing. Each student got in fifth standard, just remember, each kid was given a box where there were lights and there were battery and they were connecting it in parallel and uh, series and seeing what is happening. Each kid. She has never forgotten the series and parallel connection after that. 
but came back to India. She has never done it again. So actually what you say is true. Everything, almost everything, some of the things we cannot actually do practicals in the lab. But a lot of things we can, but we don't because we don't have time because we are rushing all the time to finish it. Finish the portions. I hope I answered in some way. Hi, so, your question is answered. Hello, Vimal. He doesn't seem to be satisfied with my answer. Okay. No, no. I hope I, I hope I, I, hope I answered his question because I okay. I don't know. Okay. I tried. Yes. Anyone else? Uh, hello. Ma'am. Uh, yeah. Yes, we yeah. Hello. Uh, Pushpanjali. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, actually, one uh, question from uh, chat actually. Uh, yeah. uh, Abiram. Hi, Abiram. Uh, Ma'am, at the present scenario, there is a uh, cliche throw, uh, thought that professional courses uh, have more uh, scopes and easy to uh, build career. And even if we choose the way to study science, uh, uh, science, it is facing worst mode of education. So how can we get out of this and how can we pursue science from this situation? Yeah, actually, uh, it is true. In our country, the scope for science career is not bright. I know from my own experience. Uh, so the the pressure will be to, after, uh, for example, if uh, you take a PG in a subject, after that, the pressure on you, because there are no, not much labs around, not much factories around in India to employ scientists. Huh? So either there are government labs huh? and the, the how many percentage of you people may get a job in a government labs, uh, a percentage is very low. So the pressure will be always from the family or the surroundings. Always the first pressure will be either to make you an engineer or a doctor. Now, if you have escaped that and you have gone to pursue science to a PG level, then the pressure, next pressure will be uh, mostly for girls. The pressure will be to go for teaching only. Huh? Uh, write net, uh, qualify net and become a college professor or take BA and become a school teacher because that is the only prof things are, that are there in science easily available jobs. Uh, so if you have to uh, become a scientist, you should have a lot of patience and perseverance. It's mostly people who are perseverant, who are willing, uh, winning more than people who are brilliant. It is the perseverance that counts because to become a scientist, the minimum quantity, uh, qualification now is PhD. That is after MSc in uh, right ahead, you have to go join for PhD. And there are a lot of places where you can join for PhD in India and abroad. There are. But then you have to get through there. And even by get joining for a PhD, it will take you minimum four years to get a PhD. So you should be willing, if you're willing to uh, sacrifice your prime years and you are determined enough you can pursue a, a career of science. In between you may even lose years to prepare and keep writing to write the entrance examination for the PhD everything. But if you are in a hurry to get a job there is no way you will get a job easily as a scientist in India. That is a fact. Go abroad, maybe, but even then, PhD is the minimum thing. 
Yes, ma'am. I hope uh, Abhiram, you have any uh, further question for this? Adding to it? No, no, no. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, anyone else? So, um, anyone? Hello, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Uh, I am Sneha, and I was a student at Kerala Arma. And before asking a question, I'm very much happy to hear you again, ma'am. I'm very much happy about that. And my question is, now I'm doing my master's. So in my class, there are a lot of female students. But uh, when I look at the research wing of my own department, the number of female students is too less compared to the number of female students in my class. And uh, out of that, when I read a research paper or something, I can see that most of the main authors or most of the yeah main authors are male. So I can't see a, a huge number of female authors in a research paper and all. So what's the reason for that? How can we overcome that? Oh, Sneha, you know very well that there is uh, this is a patriarchal world, and every as everywhere else, science is also like that. And uh, as I told, it is. Actually, the problem is what well, actually the problem mainly is the at, after PG in our country, the girls are under tremendous pressure to get married. Yes, ma'am. That is that is the issue because parents will try their maximum to get the girls married and settled. That is the word settle. You settle. But you cannot be a scientist if you choose to settle. Only if you choose to fly, you can become a scientist. So either two, there are two ways. Huh? Till, till MSc, they will teach you. The family will teach you. Girls, boys, teach you. After MSc, there comes an issue. This is often called glass ceiling effect. Whenever you move over to the top, in any career, even in politics or wherever, women are engaged up to a point. Above that, no. So that is called the glass ceiling effect. So you have choice. After getting MA or MSc, if you want to become a physicist or scientist, you have to join for PhD in spite of the pressure to get married. You have to stand your, otherwise you have to find a partner who will allow you to pursue PhD. There are men like that. There are men like that. I got married immediately after MSc. Still I studied MTech, PhD, everything after marriage. I took my PhD with one kid inside, my, inside me and one kid outside me. So that is first. Oh, all these tremendous social sign. So you even if you get the uh, uh, success science top scientist Nobel laureate. Ah, uh, yes, Between a career and a family life. And you have to go combine both. If you have to be very stubborn and persevere, then only you will succeed. Otherwise, you won't. That is the problem. Because PhD, once you ask to join for a PhD, the family will say, PhD, PhD will be taking four years. After four years, what will you be your age? Who will marry you? Then what your answer is? To that question that determines your future either it can be okay i will find a person who will marry me or i will marry only a person who will let me study or i choose not to marry whatever unfortunately it is marriage versus career after teaching but 
Trust me, there are men out there who will encourage women. Tough to find, but there are they are there. Especially from science background, they will encourage you. Especially if they are confident enough that their ego won't get hurt if you become if you fly higher than them, then it will be okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Hello, any more questions? You yeah. uh, Hi, ma'am. Uh, I'm Prajun here. I have yeah. a question. Rather, I would call it as a discussion. Uh, yeah. For a child, like when he started his schooling, uh, like uh, even the parents, even the society, even the school management forces him to concentrate only on grades rather than gaining knowledge. Even the society judge him based on the amount of the per percentage, like 90%, oh, you are 95%, oh, you are 98%, but they won't judge him based on the knowledge which he has. So what do you suggest how he should start his journey? Uh, along with the knowledge and uh, the uh, percentage, uh, along with his grades. So what is your suggestion for this? It's, it's a very tough question to answer. It's a very tough question. Um, it is a brutal fact that kids are always judged on the basis of grades. And I often see I often see in my college that it is not the kids with higher grades who do well in practical sessions. They are not actually correlated. Kids who mug up, kids who memorize most, gets better grades. And people, kids who are not rebels at their heart, Kids who are most obedient gets better grades. Uh, it is very unfortunate. So in our country, we cannot really escape the pressure of grades. But the only way to do is to get, not to pull into the pressure of getting to the top grades, but to get good grades which are which are just enough for you to get admission to the next level to manage to get those grades and then pursue your and not allow the system to kill your interest in your subjects by reading or watching videos or, or whatever on your own and get enough grades to get to the next level. That is all that is needed. If you have knowledge, the grades are needed actually. It is not, we cannot say that we can do away with the grades because you need a certain grade to get join for a science course. So, but that is enough. If uh, the school, are rewarding kids with all top grades ignore that doesn't matter you should have a knowledge and with that knowledge you should manage to get okay grades to get admission to the next course which you want to pursue that's what i tell my kids you choose your future you you choose and find out what marks they need you aim at those grades. You get those grades enough. I don't want you to be topper in the class. I don't care who is the topper in their class, in their school, or anything. But not all parents will say that. So irrespective of the, what the parents or the school say, you the students should somehow manage to get enough marks to get to the next level, to the level they pursue. And in despite the stupid way of teaching science, they should watch more videos or something or internet to know that science is actually more interesting than that. That's the only way because we cannot change the system, Indian mentality of parents and 
schooling. Yeah, Prajol, your question is, uh, I think it's a complicated question for even yes. for uh, us when we face uh, the, like these questions, definitely. Uh, yeah, basic education uh, is required at least to pass an exam and to get into the next level semester. So it should not be like uh, I'm not getting passed in the <laughs> first semester itself and I'm expecting for the uh, rest of my future. So it should not be like that. So yeah, anyway, but uh, lots of pressure which is putting towards uh, kids' marks should be avoided by uh, parents. That is there. Uh, I wish to, uh, people will understand. Ma'am, one more question I just want to ask you, and maybe uh, I think we can conclude with that question. If anyone has a question, please do ask. Or otherwise, can we ask for one, one last question? Uh, anyone okay, else? Yes. <clears throat> Shinwa, sir? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, please, sir, you can go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, hi, ma'am. Myself, Srinivas. Uh, I think I'm not from the science background or uh, engineering background. And a few things are going over and above my head for now, but I'm still something is fascinating to be part of this connect. I just wanted to know, uh, as a child, you when you were as a child, so what actually fascinated you to get into the this department, the science? Is there anything that you saw or uh, you really liked or some kind of miracle that you felt uh, with this subject or the, the science as part of your life that which you can share so that we'll really. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, a lot of it may depend on family background also, I don't know. My parents are doctors. Uh, so, uh, but uh, see, always, there was always this atmosphere of education and books around me but and there was also lit, equally literature there was a huge library there was literature there was science and I always read I was interested in both literature and science actually and uh, science physics always fascinated me I don't know why I think it is because uh, I cannot explain it actually in a Science fascinated me in the beginning. Uh, after some time, science diverted into physics, chemistry, and biology. And then biology always, I never was comfortable with biology. Uh, and in, even if my parents were doctors, blood, anything related to blood frightened me. So biology, medicine was not for me. I loved mathematics. And loud mathematics but mathematics for its own sake i didn't like so i found physics is the area where the beauty of mathematics is actually manifested in experiments that actually prove the equations that was what actually really loud i allowed physics for the combination of mathematics and uh, physics, uh, which topics, which I loved both, but I still loved literature. And I went through the same route as entrance coaching, engineering, and I went to engineering and I found that engineering was not for me at all, terribly boring. And luckily my parents allowed me to quit engineering after three, four months. And then they asked me, what do you want to study? So I had an option. I was very good in literature and I was very good in science. So which to choose? But then I knew that if I choose science, I can always go on reading literature as a hobby. But if I choose literature as my career, I cannot do science as a hobby. So we need a lab and I loved to work in a lab, doing things in a lab, which I loved always. So even now, while I am a teacher, I miss experimenting a lot more in the lab. 
so the aspect of doing things in the lab is what fascinated me. So now also I read a lot literature, poetry, novels, everything. It can be combined, but not the other way. That is why I chose science and physics. Yeah. Uh, yes, anyone else? I think we can uh, uh, conclude with the last question I just want to ask, Madam. Madam, uh, the main area which we work for developing design, uh, actually it's aerospace and fluid mechanics, uh, it's our core area, other than edutech products, which we design. Do you work on console? Uh, no, we use ANSYS, ma'am. ANSYS Workbench, uh, uh, which is a uh, which is an alternative to console, yeah. Because so, my PhD student is working in console simulation, okay. Okay, yeah, we are using ANSYS Workbench, which is a similar kind of a, uh, a, a solution, which, uh, which uses uh, uh, a simulation, CAD modeling inside so where we can uh, we can geometry we can uh, create through uh, uh, the nodes and we can create inside and we can uh, simulate by using uh, opt, uh, like uh, settings so it's very uh, easy for engineers uh, to use that uh, so that's the reason we are using that anyway matlab is used for our, uh, in our electronics department like they are using that for getting simulations but anyway for mechanical background uh, like our lab is mainly for elect electronics electrical and mechanical so i am from mechanical engineering background so we go for uh, uh, design and uh, development fabrication so we outsource the fabrication right now as it, as it's a, uh, a startup for us uh, uh, we are invest uh, investing lots on lots of uh, amount on uh, getting our in-house facility to manufacture uh, and uh, deliver the product. Uh, right now, it's our goal. Uh, it's our uh, um, next objective for this year. Uh, and uh, this organizing these lectures is, uh, I'm a kind of a science fascinated person. So I really love this. And my team also wants to uh, in, uh, learn from uh, uh, a teacher like you, scientists like you. Uh, so that's the reason we are started organizing and maybe uh, their relatives kids maybe children people who are working along with us they can also start appreciating and uh, getting awareness towards uh, taking basic science uh, i now feel like i have taken engineering but still i i regret that i could have taken bsc physics uh, but nowadays uh, we are directly uh, giving the application oriented no no as i said the, the theme our present theme is uh, the integration of science technology and industry yes 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 so i think that, uh, now that we are is the way we should work correct yeah now we have taken uh, engineering so uh, now we are directly uh, working on the product directly uh, the thing going from the scratch but uh, bsc i think we have to uh, uh, mix we have to blend the uh, both as a team if you work then definitely in a team in, in a team there should be Sign, uh, pure scientists and engineers together and then we should tie up with industry and then launch products exactly ma'am that's a very that's very uh, important for us yeah as a uh, um, as a curriculum uh, what they have learned from bsc i think we need to utilize that uh, uh, in our industry applications while developing the product from scratch so yeah I uh, just want to know, uh, we can uh, conclude and uh, uh, just I want to know about the, your experience in IIST as, a, as I said, uh, we are into some aerospace product developing. So I just have a curiosity to know. No, no, no. actually uh, I worked there as a faculty of physics only. Uh, okay. That was in uh, ISRO started an institute uh, called Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology where the aim was uh, the mold, the scientists for ISRO after uh, plus two through the JE entrance itself uh, take students and mold them uh, in courses which are exclusively suited for ISRO. So there was aerospace engineering branch, avionics engineering branch, and then uh, science branch, which included uh, astronomy and remote sensing. And uh, so these were the important departments uh, and they took faculty, new faculty. And I was one of the physics faculty they took. And I oh. taught basic physics in the 
uh, in this BTEC students in the first three, four semesters, that's all. I was not directly, uh, the Chandrayaan happened when I was there. Also, we had a lot of interactive sessions with the actual ISRO labs where we used to take the kids to their labs to show with uh, ISRO other than I developed a sensor which we uh, fiber optic sensor which humidity sensor which I developed as a project uh, which was tested in their facilities other than that I had no immediate uh, collaboration with this thing the aerospace engineering department was there I had friends that that's all I, I, I was still a physics teacher the faculty of physics Oh, very nice. And, and uh, my students are now uh, engineers in ISRO. Wow, that's great to know. Yeah. Yeah. As I, I, I quit that and to come to my hometown in Kerala, Verma, because that must be the question so many people are asking. Why quit ISRO and join a college? local college in Trichur because this is a hometown and also I had some severe health issues with which I could not work in that place which is Valiamala which is a far away place and I had to commute and I couldn't due to some health issues back pain issues so I quitted on my own yes That's yes it's a right decision, I think, uh, in, in your uh, personal uh, aspect, uh, aspect, personal aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Vimal. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so I think we can conclude. Uh, Vimal, uh, last. Tell me, Vimal. Uh, um, uh, I have not question, but no, no any question. But thank you, ma'am, uh, for giving great lecture. But my question is, how can I connect with you? <laughs> with, uh, any, any kind. If I, if you... Oh, then. Thank you. Ah, I didn't get you. You want my contact number or something? Uh, if you, uh, yeah, if I you want to. Uh, yeah, I think you must be knowing Malavika. She she has my number. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think you know, uh, you, know, is, Vimal, you know Malavika, or you want me to give the my number in the chat box? Okay, I will. Okay, okay, ma'am. Uh, I don't know any ma uh, Malvika, but uh, you can give in chat box. Actually, Vimal is an external person from, uh, he is not into our lab. Uh, oh, oh, then I will give in chat box. Wait, no, no. We will connect, uh, uh, no problem. We will connect with uh, Malavika and uh, we will get it. Yeah, you can provide in chat box also. Yes. I'm, I'm also, uh, I, I was also an engineering student from electronic communication engineering uh, oh. from NOIDA. Uh, so I think uh, I can and um, uh, I'm inter interesting to know about the uh, space uh, research. Uh, so like uh, I'm doing my research on that. Oh, but then I'm not the right person. I no longer have any connection with them. Sorry. I no longer have any connection with them. Now I'm just a teacher in a college in Trichur. But till... Uh, Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yes, Vimal, no problem. Definitely, if you have any questions related to career, how to choose career for uh, your next uh, uh, option, if you have any questions, something like that, definitely you can uh, pitch it to us and we will uh, ask that question to Madam. Uh, via, uh, and I, I have given my number anyway. Okay. Yeah. So, sure. Uh, thank you so much, uh, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think many of them joined from. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Uh, yes, everyone. I think people joined from uh, different uh, state as well, uh, from North India, like one or two. So we expected uh, around 30, and we are having 25 there now, 23. So. And I really don't think stu school students are there. They must be mugging up their equations. <laughs> yes, I, I think we planned actually, but uh, anyway, the, the uh, basic which we explained, I think uh, is always uh, helpful for kids and for uh, the uh, engineering graduates. Yeah. Everyone. So it is always okay. uh, like, no problem. Thank okay. you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, uh, let us connect once again uh, if time permits. Yeah. 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 Thank, you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Have a great day. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you.
थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू सर